Why does light always travel at a speed of 299,792,458 meters per second? An augmented Newtonian dynamics presentation. When Einstein introduced relativity in 1905, the behavior of waves was well understood. A wave always travels at a speed fixed by the properties of its medium. Sound moves at a speed set by air's elasticity. Water waves move at a speed determined by depth and gravity. A vibration on a string moves at a speed set by tension and density. The rule was universal. If the medium does not change, the wave speed does not change. For more than two centuries, physicists assumed light must work the same way. Since it behaved like a wave, it seemed obvious that it needed a medium, the ether, permeating all of space. And if the Earth moved through this medium, it should experience an ether wind, just as a ship moving through water feels a current. Light traveling with this wind should appear slightly faster, and light traveling against it slightly slower. But Michelson and Morley found no wind at all. No variation. No direction. Their result contradicted everything known about waves. Physics stood at a crossroads, rethink the medium or remove it entirely. Einstein chose the second, declaring the speed of light constant for all observers, as a postulate, not an explanation. Consequences of treating the speed of light as a postulate. In special relativity, the constancy of the speed of light is not explained, it is assumed. Einstein simply declared that all observers, no matter how they move, must measure the same speed for light. This postulate immediately contradicts the classical rule of motion known as the Galilean transformation. Under ordinary physics, speeds add. If you walk forward inside a moving train, you inherit the train's motion and then add your own. If the train is moving at 100 km per hour and you are walking forward in the train at 5 km per hour, your speed with respect to the ground is 105 kmh. Every familiar object behaves this way. Thrown stones, sound waves, ripples on water, bullets, rockets, all obey simple addition of velocities. But Einstein's postulate forbids this for light. A beam emitted from a moving train must not appear faster than one emitted from a platform. Whether the source moves toward you, away from you, or sideways, the measured speed of light must remain unchanged. This behavior fits neither category we understand. It is not the behavior of a wave in a medium, whose speed is defined relative to that medium. And it is not the behavior of a particle, whose speed must depend on its momentum and the motion of its source. Light behaves like both, yet obeys the kinematics of neither, and relativity resolves this by elevating its speed to a fixed law without offering a physical cause for it. Why the wave-particle question was not asked in 1905. Having particle-like behavior does not disqualify something from being a wave. Ultrasound shocks, hypersonic pulses, and phonines in solids all deliver energy in discrete packets while remaining fundamentally wave-driven. From a modern perspective, the natural question is obvious. If all waves travel at a speed fixed by their medium, and light is also a wave, then why isn't the speed of light fixed by its medium as well? But in 1905, this question could not be asked. The idea that something could behave as both a wave and a particle simply did not exist. Light was regarded purely as a continuous electromagnetic wave. Newton's corpuscles had long been abandoned, and Einstein's own photoelectric paper, hinting at discrete energy packets, had just appeared and was not widely accepted. The conceptual tools we now take for granted, from wave packets to quantized pulses, lay decades in the future. Because wave behavior and particle behavior were seen as mutually exclusive, physicists never considered that light could deliver energy discreetly while still being governed by a medium. So, when Michelson and Morley found no ether wind, the medium was discarded before the wave-particle nature of light was even understood. Relativity was built in a world where waves required media, particles obeyed Galilean addition, and the categories could not overlap. By declaring the speed of light constant, Einstein eliminated the medium, without providing anything to replace it. The deeper question, why this value of 299,792,548 meters per second, and why universal constancy, remained unanswered. With the speed of light fixed by postulate, space and time themselves had to change. Moving clocks run slower, moving lengths become shorter, simultaneity vanishes. 
The structure of space-time becomes a geometric device that exists for one purpose only, to protect the constancy of the speed of light. The consequences of treating the speed of light as a limit in quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics inherited Einstein's constancy of the speed of light, but interpreted it in a very different way. In relativity, it is a postulate. In quantum theory, it becomes a limit, a ceiling that no influence, no signal, and no causal effect may cross. Particles may exist in superpositions, fields may fluctuate, and virtual particles may appear and vanish, yet through all this unpredictability runs one rule, nothing can convey usable information faster than the speed of light. Quantum field theory encodes this in the principle of microcausality. Events that light cannot connect in time must not influence each other, and the equations enforce this by making their commutators vanish at space-like separation. Even entanglement, dramatic as it is, never transmits information faster than light. But quantum theory never explains why this limit exists. It simply embeds the restriction into its structure. Electrons have mass, photons have frequency, atoms have energy levels, but the speed of light stands apart. It is inserted, not derived. And so the deepest question remains untouched, what physical property of space determines this universal speed? If the universe contains no medium, the question has no answer. But if it does contain a medium, a real substrate through which energy is passed from place to place, then the speed of light becomes not a mystery, but the natural consequence of that medium's properties. This is where and theory begins to join the pieces into a single explanation. The AND theory ether, what it is and what it is not. The ether of augmented Newtonian dynamics is not the mechanical substance imagined in the 19th century. It is not a gas or a fluid, and it does not create drag or ether wind. Instead, it is a sea of ultra-low energy virtual photons, the same vacuum fluctuations accepted in quantum field theory. This medium has no mass density in the classical sense and no preferred rest frame. It is an electrical medium, its tension is alignment, and its elasticity is the ability of virtual dipoles to pass on a disturbance. How light travels straight, the aligned photon channel. When an electron emits a real photon, nearby virtual photons snap into alignment along the direction of emission, forming a narrow, straight chain. The energy of the photon passes along this aligned channel at the fixed rate allowed by the medium, the universal speed of light. Light travels straight because the alignment is straight. Why light spreads? The inverse square law. The alignment is strongest along the central filament, but each promoted dipole also influences neighboring dipoles sideways. This creates a fan of parallel, expanding lines, like iron filings around a magnet. As the wavefront widens, the same energy is distributed over a larger spherical area. The intensity falls with distance squared because the area increases with distance squared. How photons preserve their energy, the promotion mechanism. A photon does not carry its energy intact through space like a projectile. Instead, it continually promotes extremely low-energy virtual photons into its own state as it encounters them. Every real photon is followed by a stream of identical photons emitted at enormous rates, up to 10 to the power of 14 per second, ensuring that the leading edge always has fresh dipoles to promote. Energy is passed forward like a flame along a line of candles, allowing photons to preserve their frequency and energy across billions of light years. The origin of gravity in and theory. Why the same ether that carries light also produces gravity. In the standard model, a photon is an excitation of the electromagnetic field, created when charges accelerate or change energy levels and theory takes a different route. It does not rely on wave-particle duality or treat the electron as a probability cloud. The electron is a real particle with mass and size, and it stabilizes itself the same way the nucleus does, through the constant exchange of force carriers. An electron continuously emits two distinct kinds of photons. Real photons are emitted directionally and appear to us as light but the electron also emits and immediately reabsorbs photons to regulate its own energy. These virtual self-interactions occur on timescales of about 10 to the power of minus 16 to 10 to the power of minus 18 seconds. They are real emissions, but so brief that they fall within the energy-time uncertainty window, 
allowing the electron to stabilize itself without violating conservation laws. Through this constant emission and immediate reabsorption the electron maintains its stability around the nucleus in a process of self-stabilization. Each virtual emission interacts with the sea of ultra-low energy virtual photons that fills the universe, the virtual photon ether, physically identical to what astronomers call dark matter. Every emission produces a brief, directionless alignment in this medium. These alignments carry no energy and no density and can extend vast distances. They occur trillions of times per second around every particle of matter. The transmission speed of the ether, why gravity mimics the inverse square law. Because these virtual emissions are isotropic, gravity does not spread like electromagnetic radiation. Instead, the enormous number of emissions ensures that some of the transient alignments produced by one object always line up with another. As the distance increases, fewer of these alignments happen to connect the two bodies. This statistical thinning mimics the inverse square law, not because each alignment weakens, but because fewer alignments coincide. Gravity is thus the rare but persistent reinforcement of reciprocal alignments between objects, pointing along the shortest path in the ether and operating at a strength about 10 to the power of 40 times weaker than electromagnetism. Meaning of C. Why every observer measures the speed of light to be the same. When light travels through the virtual photon ether, it always moves at a constant speed because this is the nature of a wave moving through a medium. The properties of that medium do not change with direction, with motion, or with perspective. They do not change inside atoms or between galaxies. They do not change whether the source of light is moving or standing still. And they do not change when the observer moves. The medium alone determines the speed of light. If a wave travels through a medium with fixed properties, every observer will measure the same speed, no matter how they move relative to the source or the wave. The wave does not speed up or slow down simply because someone is running toward it or away from it. The medium sets the speed, for as long as the medium is unchanged. In and theory, a photon forms a narrow, aligned channel in the universal ether, and the disturbance moves along that channel at the natural rate the medium allows. This transmission speed does not depend on the motion of the emitter or the motion of the observer. It depends only on the properties of the medium itself. This is why all observers measure the speed of light to be the same. Not because their clocks slow down. Not because their rulers shrink. Not because space-time reshapes itself to preserve a postulate. Observers measure the same speed because the medium that carries light is constant. Einstein correctly discovered what observers measure and theory explains why they measure it to be what it is. The constancy of the speed of light is not imposed on nature, it emerges from nature. 